All right, so we've done everything we need to do as far as the delete goes. Now it's time for the depower. And there's a couple of ways to do this. Obviously, you can just take the rack off of the car. If you do it at the tie rod ends, you're going to have to adjust your front end alignment again. I really don't feel like doing that. Also, if you take the rack off at the tie rod ends, the outers, then you're going to have a really hard time keeping the rack still while you disengage the tie rod inners. So it's easy to do the tie rod inners on the car and if you break the tie rod inners loose first then you can just drop them with the outers and you don't have to adjust your alignment when you're done you just put the rack back in and then put the inners back on so we're gonna be doing that today I need to get the car in the air so that I can get to the power steering rack so I'm gonna get the car up on jacks I'm gonna spray a lot of degreaser and try and get as much crap out of there as I can I'm also going to mark the alignment of the steering shaft as it goes into the steering assembly so that when I put it back together so that I know it'll be in the right spot and that my steering alignment will still be right and then we'll get the greasy rack out of there and disconnected and pulled apart. So I got the car as high in the air as I possibly can. Now the main factor is to not mess with the tie rod outers because that's what's going to change your alignment the inners actually have a ball joint that spins freely so that when the car is moving up and down and tires are turning left and right it allows them to spin freely the inners are not adjustable so they don't adjust your alignment at all but they are held on with these tabbed washers so we're going to need to get the boots out of the way move those tab washers out of the way and then break the inners loose so that we can unscrew them and drop them. That'll allow us to take the steering rack out completely without having to worry about that later on the bench. It's a lot easier that way. Now as you can see on the steering linkage where the steering shaft meets the actual steering assembly, there's two dots and there's also this tabbed mark here that I mark onto the sleeve here so that I can arrange it all back to the right way. But it looks like that individual sleeve is going to only line up one way. So that's an advantage to getting it back together properly. So I've got one of the boots removed as you can see it's split and that's really bad because then the grease can't stay on here you can get dirt and debris in there and it'll ruin your inner tie rods a lot sooner than you'd hope but as you can see it's like a ball so it spins this right here is independent of this so there's this little tabbed washer here we need to move these tabs back out of the way so that this can spin freely and when it's on the car it holds everything into place so it's a lot easier to get this off and then you can just let this drop down out of the way and it won't affect your steering alignment when you put everything back together your alignment will still be the same we need to do this though on both ends so that then we can take out these 12 millimeter i think or 14 millimeter bolts and i took the 12 millimeter bolt holding the steering shaft out already and then the entire unit can just fall right out of the front and we can do the service to depower it all right once you beat those little tabs back out of the way that thing comes out pretty easily i just use some channel locks because i don't have a wrench that big but you just unscrew it and the tire will actually turn out of the way for you that'll drop down and then everything Thing is still aligned the way it should be so once you tighten that back up and bend those little lock tabs back over your alignment should be fine now i just got to do the other side take the four i believe 14 millimeter bolts out and then pull the rack out so indeed they were 14s i got those out and now i can wiggle the entire rack around also if you're ever doing a rack and pinion replacement this is obviously the same steps that would need to be taken and then just reverse the removal for the install so now i'm going to try and wiggle this out it should just slide right off the drive shaft for the steering wheel hopefully so we'll see how that goes well, that was pretty easy so now that I have the rack out, I'm gonna try and degrease it down some more and take it over to the workbench and start the disassembly. All right, so here we have the rack. I have to take out this line and these lines here. I'm gonna weld the bungs that go in there initially, cut the hoses off even, and then put a little weld inside the actual head bungs so I can plug those back up. It's not necessary, but it does keep dirt and debris from getting inside the rack. I also need to take this bolt off and this bolt off so that I can get the actual shaft out and then go from there.
Okay, so I kind of skipped a few steps because honestly there was just different ways of getting this out were not working. I had to check a couple different forum posts and the Flying Miata PDF, but I eventually got this shaft out. I gotta get this gasket off here. And then I also welded up the input shaft so that there's no play in that because apparently there's about a millimeter of play. So I put some tack welds on there. Not real sure if I'm supposed to put this gasket set back on or not because there are bearings that go at the top and the bottom of that shaft. So I'm pretty sure I don't need that because the bearings will support it. I don't know. Kind of just going by about six different forum posts. Hopefully at this point everything goes back together and works the way it's supposed to and my front end alignment doesn't need to be redone. So I'm going to start reassembling everything now. Just realized there was all kinds of oil from when I hit the shaft with a impact wrench to get the bottom nut off of the turning buckle. It shot a bunch of oil out. I didn't realize it had shot all over there. So sorry if some of the scenes before this were a little hazy or blurry. What I've done is I've taken all the fittings off of each of the hoses by cutting the flare off of the end of the hose and I also cut the end of this hose. And then what I can do is put this bolt back through this hose to seal the hole off on the sides here and in the shaft itself. This isn't under pressure anymore, so you could technically just fill these with some RTV silicone. I'm going to weld them shut just because I have a welder and why not, and then I can use them as plugs to fill in all the holes that are left from all the hoses. So I'm going to do that now. We'll let those cool and then I'll install them into the rack and then I will proceed to try and get it back centered so that my front end alignment doesn't get fucked up. Okay, so I got everything buttoned in down here. Got the inner tie rod ends pushed back in. Got the washer flattened back out onto the flat side so it can unravel itself. I also connected the upper and I think because I disconnected the knuckle itself, I may be off a couple of degrees, but I can take it around the block and that will tell me right away if down here, not up there, if I'm off a couple of turns, I can actually pull it off and re-clock it. So I'll do that, taking it around the block, making sure the steering wheel is still centered. If it's not, then I can, again, pull that off, reclock it, put it back on, and then go from there. I'm gonna put everything back together, get it off the jack stands. So while I'm in here buttoning everything up, I cut the wiring that ran over here for the left side fan. Normally, this is the AC only fan. If you had a non-AC car, then you won't have this fan. So clearly only one fan is enough to run the heating and cooling systems, but I went ahead and clipped the wires here and that gave me enough wire to splice into here. So now when this fan cuts on, this fan cuts on as well. So I'll have double the cooling. Eventually I may end up wiring a dash toggle switch to turn that on and off independently for lower speeds, for drifting, etc. So now just back to buttoning everything up. All right, I got everything back together. I'm going to take it around the block, make sure everything still works as it should. Nothing's rattling, nothing weird. I'm going to hopefully get it up to temperature so that I can see that both fans kick on together. If this one spins backwards, then I know I wired in the wires backwards, but that's easy to just flip them. If the steering wheel is in the center, then I know I got everything down there lined up properly and I should be good to go. If not, it's pretty easy to reach because there's so much room in there now. Probably next video, I'll pull the heat shield and the exhaust manifold because I intend to do a two and a quarter, maybe two and a half inch straight exhaust all the way back to a muffler. And I'd like to wrap the header instead of the heat shield. I eventually need to do a valve 
valve cover gasket and a CAS O-ring seal all at once. And when I do that, I'll paint the valve cover. So right away I can tell that it's a little harder to steer at zero to five miles an hour. But after that, once you're rolling, it's really not even noticeable. It's actually a lot better. I like the responsiveness. It feels like you're a lot more connected to the wheels. You can feel exactly what they're doing. Um, I know right away that my clocking is a little bit off. It's a little off center, but I can adjust that, like I said, just by changing the clock on the input shaft. Um, everything feels good. The responsiveness of the car is actually a lot snappier uh, without having the power steering and AC compressor lined into the accessory drive belt system. So it's a lot snappier. I can definitely feel the horsepower. It's only a couple to five horsepower tops, but it's very noticeable. There's not as much lag on the engine. It's got a lot more responsiveness in the throttle. It wants to rev easier. I'm definitely liking it. I'll see more once I get to drive on the highway and stuff like that. But for now, I'm gonna get back in the garage. I'm gonna get the input shaft lined up a little better and um, make sure everything's dead centered. And then we'll go from there. Thanks for watching. Miata spotting. Must be a racer. Clearly got some race tires. Smash the like button, subscribe to see more right into your email instantly as soon as I post a video, and keep modding.